Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. So intercompany inventory, parent and sub, when they sell to each other, is a hot topic on the CPA FAR exam. So if the parent corp owns 100% or even if they own 80% of the stock of the sub, you have this issue. Whenever the parent sells inventory to the sub or the sub sells inventory to the parent, it doesn't matter which direction. It's the same issue. So the parent in this example is going to sell inventory that costs them 800000 to the sub for 900000 And there's going to be a $100,000 profit on the sale. This is a wholly owned subsidiary and you can't show profit of that 100,000. None of the inventory purchased by the sub was sold yet to outsiders by December 31st, year one. So they bought the inventory from the parent. They still have it as of the end of the year. And that's important to know whether they still have it or not, because that's going to show you how you're going to eliminate that $100,000 profit. So first, the journal entries that were made by the separate companies go to 170. So the parent debited accounts receivable, credited intercompany sales, 900,000. That's on the parent's separate books. And then debited intercompany cost of goods sold and credited inventory for 800,000. That's on the parent's separate books. Now the journal entry to record the purchase by the sub on the sub separate books. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable, but notice 900000 Well, it's the same company. So how could one have inventory at 800000 and the other one have inventory 900000 I understand why, because they paid 900000 for it, the sub did, but it's the same entity. So we can't just magically write up the value of that inventory by 100000 just because we moved it from the parent's warehouse to the sub's warehouse. Or maybe we didn't even move it at all. Maybe it's still in the warehouse and we just recorded the sale. You can't just make a profit that way. Remember, this is a common entity owned by the parent. So the key is there's a $100,000 profit that needs to be eliminated. And where do we eliminate it from? Well, it says all the inventory, none of it's been sold yet. So all the inventory is still with the sub that they bought from the parent. They still have it all. They haven't sold any of it yet, which makes it easy to eliminate it. Go to 171. Here's how we'll eliminate that 100,000. We'll just credit inventory of the sub for 100,000 because that's where it all is. And that puts the inventory right back to 800,000, doesn't it? So on the consolidated work paper, we make this entry, not on the separate books. But on the consolidated work paper, we make this entry on 171. Debit intercompany sales, 900,000. Credit intercompany cost of goods sold, 800,000. And credit inventory, 100,000. And we can do that because it says all the inventory that was purchased is still with the sub. They haven't sold any of it to outsiders yet. So all that 100,000, we can just reduce inventory. But what if, go to 172, what if we're going to change one thing? Instead of none of the inventory was sold by year end, what if all of the inventory purchased by the sub was sold to outsiders by year end? They don't have any of it left. They bought it from the parent and sold it all by year end. How do we eliminate that 100000 We still have to eliminate it. Well, once again on 173, the separate entries... The parent will once again debit accounts receivable and credit intercompany sales for 900000 The parent will once again debit intercompany cost of goods sold and credit inventory for 800000 And the sub will once again on their separate books debit inventory for 900000 and credit accounts payable for 900000 And that's the problem. We can't have it at 900000 when it only costs the parent 800000 but this time we're assuming the sub sold all the inventory. They don't have any of it left. In fact, they sold it to outsiders and made a profit of a million four. 
So they would have debited the sub on their separate books. Million four accounts receivable credit sales, a million four. Debit cost of goods sold for what they paid, 900,000. And credit inventory, 900,000. So now the inventory is all gone. The inventory for the sub, it's in and out on their separate books. You see the red entries for 900,000? Inventory in, inventory out, 900,000. The sub's got none of that inventory left as of year end. Instead, all of it's in cost of goods sold now. But the problem is cost of goods sold shouldn't be 900,000. It should only be what? 800,000. So go to the next slide. You'll see how we're going to eliminate that 100,000. Same thing on the work papers, not in the separate books, but on the work papers, we're going to debit intercompany sales, 900,000, credit intercompany cost of goods sold, 800,000, and another credit to cost of goods sold for 100,000 because all the inventory has been sold now. So we don't credit inventory this time for 100,000. We credit cost of goods sold for 100,000. And that's the only difference between this elimination and the one we did a few minutes back when they still had all the inventory. We were able to just credit inventory. Now we can't do that because the sub doesn't have any of the inventory left. They sold it all. All right, any questions on when they sell all of it or when they sell none of it? If they sell none of it, we credit inventory for the 100000 If they sell all of it, we credit cost of goods sold for the 100000 Now, you know what they're going to do on a CPA exam. Go to 175. What if they sold some of it, not all of it? But at least we know what to do. Now we just have to adjust. We have to allocate. Do a percentage, a pro rata, something fancy. But we started with something easy, so we understood it. Now we can get a little fancier. Parent owns 100% of the stock. Again, they sold inventory again with a cost of 800000 to the sub for 900000 Some of the intercompany inventory was sold by year end. Ah, some of it was. Not all of it, not none of it, some of it. The year one inventory of the sub included goods purchased from the parent for 540000 So 540 of the 900000 is still in inventory. That means the other 360,000 must have been sold. Does that make sense? Because that's where we got to start out here. The fact that some of it is still with us, most of it is still here with the sub. 540 of the 900,000 is still in inventory. 360 was sold. So 540 over 900, that percentage we're going to reduce from inventory. 360 over 900, that percentage we're going to reduce from cost of goods sold. The rest of it is just a repeat. Go to 176. Once again, intercompany sales on the parent's separate books. Same entry we made before. And the sub, same entry as before. Debit inventory, credit accounts payable, 900,000. So everything's there as exactly as we saw. But this time on 177, some of the inventory purchased from the parent was sold as of year end. But 540,000 of the 900 is still on hand. And the same 100,000 needs to be eliminated, but we're going to have to eliminate it from two places this time. Some of the 100,000 is going to be eliminated from cost of goods sold, whatever was sold, that percentage. And whatever wasn't sold... That percentage is going to be a reduction of subsidiary inventory. Just a matter of a pro rata calculation. You can see it on 178. So the ending inventory percentage is 60%, 540 over 900. The cost of goods sold elimination is 40%, 360 over 900. That same 100,000, we're going to just take it from two different places. We're going to reduce inventory by 60,000 and cost of goods sold by 40,000. And that's how we're going to get rid of that 100,000. And it'll look like this on 179. Intercompany sales, debit for 900,000. Credit intercompany cost of goods sold. That doesn't change. Those two, the first debit and the first credit are the same. It's these next two credits. That's new. Cost of goods sold the sub we have to eliminate 40,000 of the hundred from there the other 60,000 of the hundred thousand 
reduces the sub's inventory. And that's considered one of the tougher questions on a CPA exam. And you're very likely to see one of these in multiple choice on the second testlet if you're doing well on the first testlet. And you want to be able to recognize, attack, and move on, what I call the RAM method. And this one wants to know how much of the intercompany profit should be allocated to reduce the consolidated cost of goods sold account. So Pedal Corp had the following transactions with its affiliate, Steel Inc., in year one. Pedal purchased raw materials totaling 240000 from Steel Corp., a wholly owned subsidiary. So Pedal Corp. owns Steel Corp. We like it when the parent is a P and the sub is an S. But look what's happening here. It's the parent that's buying from the sub. Does that make it any different? No. We still have to eliminate the intercompany gross profit. And they tell us that Steele's gross profit on the sale was 36000 So the 36000 in this question is like the 100000 in the question we were doing before. Now we just need to know how much of inventory remains from the intercompany purchase and how much was sold. So they tell us that Pedal had 80000 of inventory remaining on December 31st, year one. So that means they must have sold the other 160000 of it because they purchased 240000 They have 80000 remaining. They must have sold 160000 to customers. And they want to know how much of the intercompany profit from the sale should be allocated to reduce cost of goods sold. And where do we start? We start by determining what percentage of the $240,000 inventory sale is still on hand at year end and what percentage of it has been sold by year end. And they give us what we needed. They told us Pedal had 80,000 of the inventory remaining. So we'll divide 80,000 by 240,000 and we see that one third of the intercompany inventory is still on hand with the buyer Pedal and hasn't been sold yet to Pedal's customers. So one third of the intercompany profit of 36,000 is going to be a reduction of the inventory account. $12,000 will come off of inventory. So the other two thirds must be a reduction of cost of goods sold. Because if 80,000 is still on hand, 160,000 must have been sold to customers. 160 divided by 240 is two thirds, multiplied by 36,000 and 24,000 of the 36,000 intercompany profit is going to be a reduction of cost of goods sold. First, we'll look at the journal entries on the sub's own books, the parent's own books, and then we'll look at the journal entry for the intercompany inventory elimination at year end. On the sub's own books, they're the seller of the inventory. They sold to the parent. So they're going to debit accounts receivable and credit intercompany sales for 240000 That's on their own books, not on the consolidated. Then, because they sold, they also have to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the cost of 204000 How do we know the cost is two hundred four? Because if the selling price was 240 and they told us about an intercompany profit of 36000 then we know the cost of goods sold here had to have been 204000 So those two entries will be on the sub's own books. Then on the parent's own books, they were the buyer of this inventory. Debit inventory, 240000 credit accounts payable. And now for the intercompany inventory elimination. What do we debit? What do we credit? And if you think you know, leave me the journal entry in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with business combinations or any part of the CPA FAR exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 where the right teacher makes all the difference.